Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in this quick tip, we're going to take a look at both the history panel as well as how to view before and after versions of your images so you can compare them. So let's go ahead and toggle down the history panel. You can see that I imported this image, but that's all the history that's there. So let's tap the R key to access the crop tool. We'll go ahead and make a slight crop to this image. You can see that it's adding to the history here. Then I'll make a change in the basic panel. I'll click Auto. Then maybe we'll come down here and decrease our highlights, maybe increase our shadows, and just decrease the overall exposure a little bit here, and increase the presence as well as a little bit of saturation. We can also just use the temperature or tint slider in order to warm this up. Okay, so we've made a number of different changes to our image, and all of those changes have been stored here in the History Panel. And one of the great things about the History Panel in Lightroom is that even if I quit Lightroom and I come back tomorrow, all of that history will still be there. And you'll also notice that as I position my cursor over the different states in history, I actually get a preview of what that state looks like in the Navigator Panel above. So this makes it very easy for me to anticipate which state is which in case I want to go back in time. So let's say, for example, I decide that I don't like the temperature and saturation that I've adjusted. Then I can simply click on the clarity state, and that will take me to that state in history. If I decide that I want to make a change from here, you'll notice, for example, if I increase the vibrance, that is added to the top of my history state, but those two intermediate states actually disappear. So you do have to be a little bit careful when you go back in time and then make changes. You have to know that Lightroom will start keeping track of your history from whatever state you were back in time and then start recording on top of that. All right, if I want to preview my image, like in a before and after, I can always use the shortcut of tapping the backslash key. That shows me before and an after version. Just tapping it once toggles the before, tapping it again toggles afterwards. But I can also use the before and after view, which I can access by either tapping the Y key or by clicking right down here at this YY icon. And there are four different modes. We can see before, after, left and right. We could do a left-right split, and then we also have the options there for top-bottom as well as top-bottom split. I'll go ahead and leave it to the before, after, left and right. But the one thing about the before and after state is that the before state by default always is the state when you imported the file. So it's not always the most useful state to actually be comparing. For example, I might want to compare this after state with another state that's similar but maybe a little bit warmer. So you should know that you can drag from any state in history to the before state, so that this state isn't way, way, way back in time when you first imported it, but instead might be this state of exposure. So I'll drag and drop that, and now you can see that this becomes much more useful as a comparison tool. So there you have it, a quick tip for using both the history panel as well as the before and after states in Lightroom to compare different versions of your image. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.